Hi everyone, welcome to Sanus Biotech Academy. Today we are going to discuss about Hershey and Chase experiment. In the last videos, we have discussed about the Averis experiment, which has done in 1944. So, from that experiment, we can understand the genetic material is DNA, but at that time, the people thought that the genetic material is not DNA, it's protein, which has more complexity than that of DNA or RNA. So, by Hershey and Chase experiment, it is confirmed that DNA is the genetic material which has done in 1952. That means 7 or 8 years after Avery's experiment. So, let us see about Hershey and Chase experiment. In the previous videos, I have discussed about the Griffith experiment and Avery's experiment. If you didn't view that, please view that videos before entering into Hershey and Chase experiment. Otherwise, you cannot follow the sequence of experiments to confirm DNA as genetic material. Now, let us start Hershey and Chase experiment. This experiment has done by Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase in 1952 and confirmed that DNA is the genetic material. For this experiment, they have selected the E. coli host cells and T2 phage to infect the E. coli. As we know, the virus that infects the bacteria is called bacteriophage. So, here T2 phage is a bacteriophage which infects the E. coli host cells. So, before going to the experiment, let us see the general structure of a bacteriophage. In the structure of a bacteriophage, except the genetic material which is DNA here, the DNA is in the capsid head and all other parts like head, collar, tail, sheath are made up of proteins. So, the selection of bacteriophage is apt to the situation here to prove whether the DNA or protein is a genetic material. So, for this, they have selected two isotopes like P32 and S35. One isotope of phosphorus that is P32 and another isotope of sulfur that is P35. So, in the structure of this T2 phase, there is DNA and protein. We know that the phosphate is the main component of DNA. So, the function of P32 is to radiolabel the phosphate dupes in DNA. And also, we know that the protein is made up of amino acids. Also, cysteine and methionine are sulfur-containing amino acids which will present in the protein structure. So, the function of S35 is to radiolabel the cysteine and methionine in proteinaceous structure of this T2 phase that is the protein coat. So, by using these isotopes, we can understand where the DNA and protein particles transferred or moved during reproduction. This experiment also called blender experiment since after the formation of progenies, there is an agitation and centrifugation process which we will discuss later. First of all, let us see the reproduction process of T2 phage in E. coli host cell with P32 isotope. So, this is the E. coli host cell which is grown in P32 containing medium. So, here the unlabeled T2 phage infect the E. coli host cells which is grown in P32 containing medium that is E. coli in P32 labeled medium and here the T2 phages are in unlabeled condition. So after this infection then the insertion of DNA of T2 phage to the host cell occur and reproduce the T2 phage progenies. After reproduction the host cell lyses and T2 progenies will come out which releases DNA labeled progeny phages because here P32 will label all the DNA in phage progenies since it has phosphate tubes. After that the progeny developed which is DNA labeled phage is used to infect non-radioactive cells of E. coli. Note that here the P32 labeled DNA phage is used to infect. So here non-labeled host cell of E. coli is there but the infection by labeled radioactive 
phage. So we know that only the genetic material of phage will enter the host. So after this infection, the remaining structure of the phage other than the DNA that is the protein coat on the host cell membrane which will be removed by blending or agitation. So we are at the second stage of this process. First is infection then second is the blending or agitation. So by the reproduction of label T2 phase DNA that is the replication, transcription and translation of phase DNA occurs. So all the process involved in the reproduction of an organism occur and all the particles of phase structures are produced and by cell lysis the newly formed progenies are formed which contain P32 labeled DNA. So all the progenies in this generation have P32 labeled DNA. So from this experiment we can understand the DNA is transformed or passed from one generation to the next generation. So here the label DNA phage progenies are produced from the non-labeled host cell of E. coli. But during the first infection, the host cell is radiolabeled and that phage is T2 phage is not radiolabeled. And produces the progenies having the radiolabeled DNA because they are grown in the radiolabeled medium of host cell. So, Hershey and Chase analyze this transformation of DNA from one generation to another with the presence of labeled DNA in phase progenies. So the infection of P32 labeled DNA phage is P32 labeled DNA progenies which means the labeled DNA is transformed or passed from one generation to next generation. So the DNA is the genetic material. Next is the experiment with S35 as in the previous condition here also the infection of non-radioactive T2 phage to the E. coli host cells grown in S35 containing medium occurs. As we said this S35 will label the protein particles in T2 phage. So after this infection the phage reproduction occurs and by host cell lysis it releases the T2 phage progenies which are protein labeled. So here only the protein coat is labeled with S35 but not the DNA. Since the DNA doesn't have the sulfur, it will only label protein part of the phage. That is the protein coat, its body structure other than the genetic material. Please note that here the protein coat of T2 phage is labeled, not the DNA. Then this protein labeled phage progeny is used to infect the E. coli host cell which are unlabeled ones as in the previous case. Okay, so now here the T2 phage is labeled and E. coli host cell is not labeled. So by reproduction of T2 phase, not that only the DNA will enter into the host, not the protein coat. But here the protein coat is labeled and DNA is unlabeled. So after the infection as in previous case, the protein coat on the host cell membrane will be removed by blinding. So here also only the DNA enters the host cell. So in this case after reproduction the host cell lysis releases the progeny phages that contain no S35 labeled protein because only here DNA enters the host cell which is not labeled. So from this we can understand the genetic material is not protein, it's DNA. If it was protein, it will pass to one generation to next generation to maintain its hereditary character. Then after centrifugation, that is the third stage in this process. So by centrifugation, it is revealed that the desirable pellet contains more than 70% of P32 label particles, which is DNA. And the supernatant contains more than 80% S35 label particles which are proteins. So from this experiment by infection, blending and centrifugation, the genetic material is confirmed. It's DNA, not the protein. Okay. 
After this experiment, Rosalind, Franklin and Wilkins have revealed the X-ray diffraction pattern of DNA. Then in 1953, the structure of DNA proposed by Watson and Crick. So that's all about the Hershey and Chase experiment. I hope you all understand this lecture. If this video is useful for you, please like and share. Also, don't forget to subscribe my channel and press bell icon. Okay, thank you.